If you want to practice all of the new PTE questions using artificial intelligence on an online portal that has a similar marking to your real PTE exam, head over to masterpte.com.au to create a free account. Here, you can practice all four sections separately and receive instant feedback for all of your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. You can also view and compare your answers with others who have already succeeded in achieving a high score. Download 9090 Bands template for speaking, writing, and listening. Take mock test, receive instant result, overall feedback, and in-depth analysis which helps you pinpoint exactly where you lose points. MasterPTE.com.au the best PTE practice software in the world. Qualities of history and journalism are similar, which both need the determination to look for all available sources and the collection of evidence, both need universal sympathy for all sides of the story, and both need detailed attention to logic and literary style. The rules to determine their qualities conclude these crucial factors which means the articles should be vivid, interesting, and have a clear writing style. Andrew Carnegie was born in Scotland in 1835. His family moved to America when he was 13 and settled in Pittsburgh. He found jobs working in a fabric mill and telegraph office. Carnegie always did well at whatever he set his mind to. He was known to make improvements to any job he held. While working for the telegraph office, he began studying the railroad system, and he soon became the superintendent. He took the money he had saved and invested in an oil company. His investment return was good and then he went to England to learn how to make steel. He wanted to make steel that was cheaper and more durable than American steel. He came back with his knowledge and built a huge steel factory. Carnegie's factory was very successful and he sold it for $480 million. Carnegie was a very wealthy man but he was more interested in philanthropy than spending his money on himself. He spent the rest of his life giving his money away to worthy causes. Reading and learning were very important to him, so he built many libraries. He also established universities and research institutes. Carnegie built hospitals, museums, and theaters. One of the most recognizable buildings he built was Carnegie Hall in New York City. Carnegie Hall hosts many concerts and symphonies each year and is an important part of New York City culture. Andrew Carnegie passed away at the age of 83. In his lifetime he gave away 90% of his fortune. He is known as a man who was selfless and wanted to do good for others.
Absolutism is referred to as the claim that there is a universally valid moral system. Such a system applies to everyone, whether they realize it or not. Also, it contains rules, guidelines, and principles, which are all universal. It acts as a roadmap guiding individual and social behaviors. Some principles of absolutism cannot be violated or betrayed, and they have wide acceptance with no assumptions or interpretations. There is a boundary line that tells what is right and what is wrong. The idea of absolutism is that nothing is dependent on situations. Keywords. Perspectives. Objectives. No exception. As long as industrialized nations consume energy and developing countries increase their fossil fuel consumption the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere will continue to rise. Researchers predict that temperatures will increase about 2 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century. What's less certain is what rising temperatures mean for the planet. Some climate models predict subtle changes. Others forecast rising sea levels which could flood coastal areas around the world. Weather patterns could change, making hurricanes more frequent. Severe droughts could become more common in warm areas and species unable to adapt to the changing conditions would face extinction. Although much remains to be learned about global warming, many organizations advocate cutting greenhouse gas emissions to reduce the impact of global warming. Consumers can help by saving energy around the house, switching to compact fluorescent light bulbs and driving fewer miles in the car each week. These simple changes may help keep the earth cooler in the future.
The development of machines is a sign of the development of the country. Machines are getting better with technological improvements, such as face recognition or language processing techniques. People make money from machines with our life is dependent on them. However, the use of machines will lead to rise of unemployment. We have to create more jobs for people, otherwise we would have nowhere else to go. Before the Industrial Revolution, British economists believed a nation's wealth lay in how much money people could pile up, but Adam Smith in 1776 claimed that a nation's wealth came from not only agriculture but also manufacture, and the nation's wealth was of the ability to achieve high outputs. Overall, national wealth was equal to the nation's income since national income measured national output. Current studies show that what goes on labels is an important consideration for manufacturers since more than 70% of shoppers read food labels when considering whether to buy a product. A recent controversy as to whether labels on prepared foods should educate or merely inform the consumer is over and a consumer group got its way. The group maintained that the product labels should do more than simply list how many grams of nutrients food contains. Their contention was that labels should also list the percentage of a day's total nutrients that the product would supply to the consumer because this information is essential in planning a healthy diet. A government agency disagrees strongly favoring a label that merely informs the consumer. In other words, a label that only lists the contents of the product. The agency maintained that consumers could decide for themselves if the food is nutritious and is meeting their daily needs. The consumer group in supporting its case has cited a survey in which shoppers were shown a food label and with an ask if they would need more or less of a certain nutrient after eating a survey of this product. The shoppers weren't able to answer the questions easily when they were not given a specific percentage. This study and others helped get the new regulation passed and now food products must have more detailed labels.
A leader can define or clarify goals by issuing a memo or an executive order, an edict or a fatwa or a tweet, bypassing a law, barking a command, or presenting an interesting idea in a meeting of colleagues. Leaders can mobilize people's energies in ways that range from subtle, quiet persuasion to the coercive threat or the use of deadly force. Sometimes a charismatic leader such as Martin Luther King Jr. can define goals and mobilize energies through rhetoric and the power of example. We can think of leadership as a spectrum, in terms of both visibility and the power the leader wields. On one end of the spectrum, we have the most visible, authoritative leaders like the President of the United States or the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, or a dictator such as Hitler or Gaddafi. At the opposite end of the spectrum is casual, low-key leadership found in countless situations every day around the world, leadership that can make a significant difference to the individuals whose lives are touched by it. Over the centuries, the first kind the out-in-front, authoritative leadership has generally been exhibited by men. Some men in positions of great authority, including Nelson Mandela, have chosen a strategy of, leading from behind. More often, however, top leaders have been quite visible in their exercise of power. Women, as well as some men, have provided casual, low-key leadership behind the scenes. But this pattern has been changing, as more women have taken up opportunities for visible, authoritative leadership. So we have a float plane, and then the earthquake itself occurred on this boat plane, the earthquake starts that particular point on the fault plane. And we call that the focus of the earthquake. And then the rupture propagates out from that point on the on the rupture plane to cover the entire full plane. That ruptures in that particular earthquake. We talked about the epicenter of an earthquake a lot, the epicenter is just the surface projection of the focus of the earthquake. So if we wanted to look in map view at where the earthquake was located, and we were able to look down into the earth, we would see the focus down at some depth near or the epicenter is just the point vertically above that focus at the surface of the earth. Okay. So this is the relationship between fault and earthquakes. This block model that you can see here is the same block model that we were just looking at, it's a thrust fault of some kind. So we have rupture on this thrust fault. And as a result of that rupture, we see a seismic waves radiated away from the fault so we get this displacement on the fault and radiated seismic waves away from the fault.
If you were to go to a library at the end of the 1300s, or through the 1400s, you would probably find a book that was then, way more popular than those titles we still read, a book that purported to be a description of the world, a guide the traveling and distant lands of BC area and almanac of everything that was just off the horizon. I am not talking about Marco Polo. No, I'm talking about something far, weirder and far, far less tethered to reality, a volume of medieval fantasy masquerading as a field guide called The Travels of Sir John Mandeville, supposedly the titular knight set out from England in the 1330s and embarked on a journey that would take him to the Middle East, Africa and Asia, though as it will become apparent, not the Middle East, not in Africa and not in Asia that we would recognize here in reality. No Mandeville spoke. It's not really about actually real foreign lands. It's about what Europeans thought was just outside the bounds of their civilizations. It's about what's beyond that mountain range that marks the borders of the lands you know, it's about what medieval people thought the foreign looks like. And all of its mysterious, alluring and intimidating, unknown. If you want to practice all of the new PTE questions using artificial intelligence on an online portal that has a similar marking to your real PTE exam, head over to masterpte.com.au to create a free account. Here, you can practice all four sections separately and receive instant feedback for all of your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. You can also view and compare your answers with others who have already succeeded in achieving a high score. Download 9090 Band's template for speaking, writing, and listening. Take mock test, receive instant result, overall feedback, and in-depth analysis which helps you pinpoint exactly where you lose points. MasterPTE.com.au the best PTE practice software in the world.